Should you get the Sony a6000 in 2018? Stay tuned to find out. If you don't know me already, go by that one camera guy. I do tutorials, guides, and reviews on Sony mirrorless equipment and gear. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on the latest content. And smash that like button because it always helps out my channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing a talking head video going over like eight different things I to consider or things to think about if you're gonna go ahead and get the Sony a6000. So the first thing I wanna point out is that I'm really not trying to convince you on buying the Sony a6000. I think you should buy the camera that makes the most sense for you, whatever system that might be, whether that's Canon, Sony, Nikon, Fuji Olympus, you name it. The whole point about this video is to just kinda help you make a deciding factor because I think those of you who are watching this either already own a Sony a6000 so if you do own an A6000, let me know in the comments, hashtag APSC is not dead if you are in that particular camp, or maybe you're deciding right now between a mirrorless camera like this or even a DSLR like this one over here, like the Canon 80D for example, maybe you're on the fence. So I'm gonna go over some things just to consider the pros and the cons. So again, I'm not trying to convince you. And the thing that I wanna point out is that I get a lot of questions, whether it's through YouTube or through direct messaging on Facebook or on Instagram, and people have a hard time deciding on uh, what to buy. I'm gonna tell you right now, one thing to consider is the overall ecosystem of what you're buying into. Just understand that when you get a Sony mirrorless camera, you're not just buying the body, but you're buying not only that, but lenses, lighting, and accessories that go with that. On the contrary, same thing with if you got a Canon camera, you're getting, you're not just getting this camera system, but you're also getting the lenses and lighting, et cetera, that go along with it. So you have to look at all the different considerations, what lenses are available to you and what you do personally. Number two on my list is why do I still shoot with the Sony a6000 when I've got cameras like the Sony a7 III or the a9 or a7R III? And I'm just gonna be completely honest with you, the only reason why I still have the a6000 and they shoot with it is because of you. There's a lot of viewers out there that still have this camera and still shoot with APS-C because that's what they have and that's what they can budget and that's what they're able to afford. And so I still wanna make content for those of you that are out there. And quite frankly, there's a lot of you out there. There's definitely a lot more people with this camera than the a7 III just based on seeing what people are searching for. So that is really the reason why I still shoot with this. Um, I would personally prefer just to shoot with maybe the a7 III or a7R III, for example, but I still want to show some love to the APS-C crowd, obviously, because it's not dead. So number three, this camera hasn't changed at all. It's been out for four years now or so, and just because it's a little bit older doesn't mean it's gotten any worse. It's still the same awesome camera that it's been since 2014. But what I really like about it, again, is the EVF, the flip out screen, the awesome autofocusing system on here. And we will get to some of the things of concern that this camera might have, but for the most part, none of those things have changed. And you can also still transfer files wirelessly. You can still charge um, your camera through the multi-port on the side right here. All these different things that came to this camera are really awesome. And that's why I still like shooting with it because it still has these modern features um, that some other manufacturers might not have. Number four, the current price on the market. Now this one is a little bit interesting because the only reason why I would recommend you to buy the Sony a6000 is if you can get it for under $400 body only. It may be under $500 if you can get it with a kit lens. I wouldn't want you to spend anything more than $500 with the body and kit only. If you shop around refurbished or online for a used model, you can get this with a kit lens for about $400 US. It's gonna vary obviously in different countries, unfortunately, but that's where I would price it at. And what's really interesting is the fact that the prices haven't really dipped a substantial amount because this camera is still so great. But you're gonna see sales during the holiday season. You're gonna see this camera drop to 400 bucks retail body only. So it might not be a good idea to buy this right now as prices are really high on this. But if you waited till the holiday season, you might see the prices dip. I know I just said this camera hasn't changed at all, but on my number five on my list is that this camera is starting to show its age. Some of the things that, that do frustrate me with this camera, and I think it's important to point out, is that the EVF is getting a little bit older, long in the tooth, when you compare it to maybe the Alpha 6500 EVF or even the EVF you might find in a full frame body like the a7 III, 
you're gonna find out that it's a lot brighter and a lot better and easier to see your shots. But it doesn't really diminish it completely. I still use it during the daytime when it's outside or bright sunlight. It still is adequate, but um, you definitely can tell if you pop your eye into this one and you pop your eye into a newer model, you're gonna see the difference. It's, I would say not substantial, but noticeable. The other thing that's showing its age is definitely the buffer on the Sony a6000, something that really irritates me a little bit but you can work around it. I do a lot of sports shooting, and one thing I noticed really quickly is if you shoot in raw, that buffer fills up very quickly. You might be able to power off maybe five to seven shots in raw, and then the camera starts having a hiccup. And when you've shot all these photos, it takes forever to write the files onto the card. I have no idea why that is and why Sony just doesn't have the systems implemented to make it transfer faster. I've always found that Canon does a much better job in some cases to transfer and offload files to the cards. And, uh, and granted, in addition to that, formatting the camera takes forever too, as well on these particular series. So that's something to keep in mind. And when it's buffering, you can't do anything else on the camera. It kind of locks up. So you gotta be careful. Now, I combat that by shooting in JPEG and minding a little bit of how I shoot. So I, I'm not saying you can't shoot sports with it in RAW. I've done it before. I just have to be a little bit more selective about my shooting and you can get some really great results. Another thing on this camera is the lack of 4K and slow motion. I know this camera only does 1080p at 60 frames per second, but to be quite frank and honest, that video quality looks pretty good. But in today's kind of competitive market in 2017, 2018, 4K is the way to go and high, slow, uh, high frame rate slow motion, like 120 frames per second is kind of the thing that's happening now. And, and to some case, it's a little bit why Canon's been dinged a little bit because they haven't updated their models. Now, if you look at the Sony Alpha 6300, you're gonna get 4K, 120 FPS, definitely a very interesting choice if you're more interested in video. Uh, you are going to be missing a headphone Sorry, not a headphone port, but a microphone jack on the Sony a6000. But if you step up to the Alpha 6300, you'll get the little microphone port. And that's something that might be of use to you if you're interested in video. Being able to get higher quality audio is a big thing. Now, you can work around it on the Sony a6000. You can use external audio like a Zoom, or you can use your phone, for example, record the audio to your phone with a Rode Video, uh, Rode Lab Kit or a Rode Lab Plus. There's other ways to do it and sync it up in post. And one more thing I wanted to point out about the Sony a6000 series, and it's played also in the 6300 and the 6500, is the very poor battery life on these cameras. If you take this camera out and you go shoot, you absolutely must either bring an external power pack to charge it or two to three additional batteries with you. The battery is going to die whether you like it or not. They just don't seem to hold their charge very well. So uh, that's one aspect about this that I do, it is frustrating when you're using it. But obviously you can work around all these different things. It's not a big shortcoming, it's just a time of it showing its age. That's the more, the way I would look at it. It's not the worst case scenario, you just gotta work around these little issues. Number six on my list, we are probably a few months away from an announcement on the new Sony Alpha 6700. This camera is out for a refresh. In particular, I'm talking about the 67, potential 6700. It's been about two years almost that the 6500 was released. So we're kind of on that time frame and that trajectory. Sony loves to reiterate their cameras frequently, as you know already. So we're due for a new one very soon. And that release of the 6700, you might see a drop in price in the fall for these other cameras once the 6700 is announced. I'm very hopeful that they might do a reiteration of the A6000, whether that's the A6000 Mark II, or um, maybe just a refresh of even the Sony Alpha 5100 and incorporate some of the modern features like a much better touch screen or a headphone or a mic jack, better battery. That's something we would like to see hopefully in the future, because here's the thing, if Sony releases an A6700, it's gonna be like a $1,400, $1,500 camera. But if Sony releases an A6000 Mark II, for example, it, they can probably keep it like a sub $600, sub $500 camera and revamp it with some new features or update it with some uh, features that you might find in the full frame system already uh, that's already there. So that's what I'm very interested in seeing. It's gonna happen, so if you're on the fence right now, if you can wait, I would just wait. 
If you absolutely need a camera right now, there's nothing wrong with getting an A6000. Number seven, is a DSLR better for you? So I have the Canon 80D here. And if you don't know already, I've shot with Canon for a while now, and I just recently transitioned over to Sony, maybe last year for the most part. So I'm not unfamiliar with Canon. And when I say DSLR, I also include, I guess in this case, Nikon as well. So it's not just one brand uh, that is a particular. But is a DSLR right for you? And here's some points I wanna make about it. Canon does a really good job with their camera systems. Don't get me wrong, you are gonna lose some features that modern mirrorless cameras have like the 4K, the high frames per second options, um, and the EVF. However, it doesn't mean that these cameras are bad. They're actually really solid. Some things I like about DSLRs is just the grip, the ergonomics, and the feel, and the handling, especially if you step up to like the 70D or the 80D, for, six, for example. And Canon honestly has this flip out screen on lock, something the Sony cameras don't have. So speaking about monitors, if you take a look, if I wanted to shoot with the Sony system, I would have to have a screen like this. This is the small HD uh, focus that I have here on this Alpha 6300. And take a look at this kit. I have to have this whole deal set up just to be able to judge my focus and see what I'm doing. But if you go ahead and jump over to a DSLR, for example, that has a fully articulating screen, you're not gonna have that issue. And secondly, if you opt for a Canon 80D, for example, you have a headphone jack, a mic port, you got the amazing touch to focus, the dual pixel autofocus, a really great autofocusing system in this camera, big battery, cards transferring right pretty quick for the most part. And by the way, you have access to a lot of incredible lenses. Not only lenses like this, the 18 to 35, but you have a lot of third-party choices and more affordable options than you would if you were gonna go with the Sony a6000, for example. If you're really serious about wanting to get into photography and you want, and you have a very, very small budget, I'm gonna tell you right now, and I say this all the time, get a DSLR camera. That is my recommendation to you. You're gonna be so much more happier because you'll have access to more affordable glass. For example, if you needed a 70 to 200 f2.8 from Sony, well, Tell you right now, this is your only choice. And this G Master is about 2,400 US dollars or more. And in the Canon system, you can get Sigma and Tamron sub $1,000 f2.8 lenses. Granted, you also got some really fast f2.8 zoom glass like the 1750. That's also available to you. You got some prime options also and some ultra wides like this Canon 10 to 18 that's much cheaper than the Sony variant, which I know they have variable apertures in the Canon version, but it is still a cheaper option if you wanted to go with this one. Makes a perfect gift, but it's also a really nice all-around camera. It only does 1080p 60, but I would say if you don't need 4K and you can opt in for this, I think you would be much more happier getting a Canon 80D, spending a little more on the body versus an A6000 and saving, all, and saving money on the glass for this system. That's my real recommendation. Even though I shoot with Sony, I still think a DSLR is the way to go. Number eight, who is this camera for? At the end of the day, it comes down to case use. Who's gonna use this? Now, I would say that, could you use this in a professional environment? I think it really depends. Um, I think if you are, if you know the limitations of the camera, you could definitely use this in some event shooting if you wanted to. Uh, I wouldn't see why not. I've Dropped this a couple of times, it's been fine. Just a few scratches here and there. Shot on the field, shot sports with it. It's a very, very capable camera. You just have to remember, battery life can be an issue. So you gotta keep those little things in mind. The buffer can be an issue. Again, those things you gotta just keep track of if you're using this. Uh, so if you are primarily into photography, this is a really awesome choice, the Sony a6000. If you are more serious about video, definitely look at the Sony Alpha 6300 and also the 6500 if you wanna stay with APS-C. If you're casually shooting and you do, maybe you have kids and you wanna shoot their sporting events or even just their events in general, A6000 again, very, very good choice to go with for the price point that it's at. Finally, like I said, as I mentioned already, if you don't care about size, and you don't care about 4K, 
get the Canon 80D in my opinion. Um, the form factor size does play a role at the end of the day. When you have a small mirrorless camera, people, people feel less nervous around you. But as soon as you have like a Canon 80D, they are gonna take you a little more seriously, which is a good thing in some cases, but they're more aware of your presence. If you're shooting with the mirrorless, it's less intrusive, but maybe in what you're doing, it won't matter. So that's what I wanted to say about the, should you get the Sony a6000 in 2018? I would love to know in the comments below if you already own a, a A6000, would you buy it today in 2018? Or would you buy something else? What would that be? Or what would you upgrade your camera to? I'd love to know your thoughts. Maybe I missed some things to consider in the comment section below. Let me know, I'd love to know what you gotta say. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't done so, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. I left my heart in California. I let it go deep into the blue. I could be happy in California. I would be fine with just me and you. Ooh, now don't go changing.